What's going on, guys? And welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week right here on the show, I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the content that I watch on the WWE Network. And, of course, I've been doing my weekly Total Divas reviews now for a few, about a few weeks, about a month or two. Today we're talking Season 7, Episode 8, Single in the City. So, of course, none of these episodes are currently available on the WWE Network. None of the Season 6 episodes I don't think are available either on the network. And usually they upload them a few months after the season ends. That has yet to be the case, which is kind of weird. Um, hopefully at some point, because I thought Season 6 was great. Season 7 is currently obviously airing on the network every single Wednesday night after NXT at 9 Eastern Time. So if you want to check out the episodes as they air, you can watch them then. Check out my reviews every Sunday right here on the channel. Um, my first Total Divas review in about two weeks, because we did not have a new episode last week. A bit of a break. So we are back this week again with Season 7, Episode 8, Single in the City. So as always, I'll be breaking down the episode in parts um, with each story that was told. There were a few people like Natalia and Lana and Nia Jax. They were all over this episode in separate stories. So like the Bella Twins were really not featured on the show at all, but they did have a little mini story there that will tie into, I think, the next episode. So I'll talk more about that and stuff like that as we kind of move forward with each story and how it kind of intertwines with each other. Um, anyway, so we start off with Naomi talking about how excited she is for SummerSlam coming up and her opportunity to defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against Natalia. And Natalia was also excited, obviously, her first real major title shot in quite some time and an opportunity to um, not only win the championship, but also tie and break the record of Trish Stratus with most pay-per-view matches of all time for any woman in WWE history, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Naomi called Natalia a dinosaur, which Natalia took exception to on some Instagram post or something. So anyway, there was some other picture surfacing online of Naomi and Lana kissing, which Rusev just finds to be fascinating. Both Rusev and Jimmy Uso debate the picture, whether it's like the right thing to do or whether it's a normal thing to do, whatever. They debate that with Naomi and Lana. I think Jimmy Uso just finds it hot. I thought Rusev did too for a second. I think he just finds it to be weird. He's like, I've never seen this before. I don't get it. I'm intrigued. I'm fascinated, but I just don't get it. So anyway, Natalia talks about the SummerSlam title match being a dream come true for her. Her bad blood with uh, Lana is still ongoing. You know, they apologized either on the last episode or the episode before that. Still a lot of bad blood there. So she brings up how Lana seemingly got Carmella removed from the live events. She's still on the house shows, but she's no longer wrestling. Lana's going to be wrestling in her place. That's what Natalia said. So Natalia's stirring the pot between Lana and Carmella. And Carmella, from what we've seen over so far on the season, uh, this season on Total Divas, she doesn't really have any beef with anyone, yet she does now with Lana because Lana got her seemingly, reportedly, according to Natalia, removed off the live events. So Carmella goes at Lana in the limo. She's, you know, sipping her tea and she's kind of uh, kind of going at Lana and talking shit about her and like, why, do, why would you ever do that? Like, I've been wrestling pretty much as long as you. I need the experience more than you. I miss money in the bank. Why the fuck would you do that? And Carmella um, is going at Lana while that's happening. Lana's talking to, to, to Natalia. Why are you stirring the pot between me and her? We had no bad blood until now. So it's a whole shit show at these three women um, from that point forward. So anyway, we go back to the Lana Rusev story real quick. Uh, Lana and Natalia continue to touch each other and caress each other's breasts and stuff like that while they're working out, uh, and that bothers Rusev. She's just doing it to piss her off, just to piss Rusev off. Uh, Lana's doing this for her. So that's really the only reason why she is doing what she is with Natalia here and kind of messing with Rusev. Natalia speaks with Nia Jax. Um, she talks, but every time she cuts a promo backstage nowadays, she has that little voice of Lana in her head saying that she can't cut a promo or that she's a bad promo and it's really getting to her as her SmackDown Women's Championship match quickly approaches and Natalia or rather Nia Jax excuse me being the great person that she is uh, calms Natalia down she tries to make her feel more confident saying that you shouldn't really have to worry about that you're fine don't get Lana get in your head don't let her get in your head so Lana has her first muscle and fitness photo shoot uh, Rusev is there and he talks to Lana about being fascinated with the fact that Lana has liked other girls, has kissed other girls. I guess that was in her past before she had met Rusev. So he says he's fascinated with this and he just does not get it like I talked about earlier. Um, the whole girl, the whole cast, or most of the cast anyway, I'm not sure who exactly was there. I know Buddy Murphy was there for some reason. Um, but Rusev joins the girls in going to a drag show 
which Rusev also does not get. Um, so he tries to hook Lana up with lesbian. He's like, hey, you like girls? Then go right ahead. You know, do your own thing. And Lana says, that was something I did before I met you. Now I'm with you. You don't have to worry about that. And I guess Rusev still does not get it. Um, then to close out the episode, Lana talks to Carmella, kind of clear the air. Carmella gets real hot. She gets pissed. It's like, if you ever fucking mess with my spot again on a house show, you're going to get it. We're done. Um, and Lana's like, oh, she threatened me. And there's still a lot of bad blood there, despite the fact that Lana tried to talk to Carmella about the issue, saying that I didn't sabotage your house show plans, but I will do whatever it takes to kind of, you know, get ahead in this business. So she admits to it, but not really, which is kind of weird. But that will be a story to watch for moving forward here on the show. Um, I mentioned the Bella Twins. They had a very small story on this episode of Total Divas. Um, the Bellas talked about how much has changed in a year. I mean, it was around this time before SummerSlam 2016 that uh, Nikki Bella was getting prepared to come back to the ring. Brie was still not pregnant, but she was trying to get pregnant around that time. So a lot had changed in that point in time. Now, neither of them are on SummerSlam this year. Uh, Nikki, Nikki talks about having an appearance at SummerSlam Fan Access or whatever, and Brie has nothing, and she gets confused about this. She's like, why is the company not calling me? And Nia Jax brings up, hey, maybe they just think that you don't want to really be a part of this anymore, or you're just not ready for it. You just had a kid a few months ago. So Brie feels left out. And we'll get more into that story, I think, in the next few episodes of Total Divas. Um, so anyway, all the women from both brands are in New York City for SummerSlam week. Maurice hangs out with Nia Jax. And Nia Jax says, you know, you got Miz, I really kind of want a partner of my own. And that immediately makes Maurice think about taking her to a fantasy fireman party, fireman party, where she can hopefully meet someone. And it's one of those, you know, uh, quick date um, meeting people where you go in and you try to talk to someone for more like 30 seconds, something like that. Um, quick dating, speed dating is what it's called. Uh, this one is just with firemen. They give out info cards. It's fucking mess. It looks terrible. Uh, Nia Jax does not want to leave her comfort zone at all, so she doesn't really seem like the type of person that would enjoy this. So she goes with Maurice, Alexa Bliss, and Charlie Caruso, who I think this might mark her first appearance on the show. Um, she does admit to not being used to the attention from all these guys. She goes from one guy after another. It's all miss, 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 miss. No hits, all misses. And then she meets one guy who she thinks is cute, and they exchange numbers, and she he seems pretty down to earth. And I think you're, we're going to see more of him moving forward here in the show. I know they showed a brief um, shot of him on a feature episode um, coming up on Total Divas, so I don't think we've seen the last of him. And I think that was about it. They just planned a Sex and the City party for SummerSlam weekend. I thought we were getting that party here on this show. We didn't. Um, I guess we're getting that either on the next episode or later on in the season. So our final story for this episode of Total Divas, Alexa Bliss has been engaged now to Buddy Murphy for about two years. They met in NXT. Um, our first real look at Buddy Murphy, I mean, anyone who has followed Alexa Bliss's career or knows her history with Buddy Murphy knows they've been together for a while now. Um, but for the Total Divas audience, our first real look at the former NXT Tag Team Champion. And she talks about the how they can't set a date for their wedding because they never see each other. Buddy Murphy's been in NXT fucking forever now. And Alexa Bliss has moved on to Raw and SmackDown, getting all the success. Multi-time champion, four-time women's champion between Raw and SmackDown. Buddy Murphy, in the meantime, hasn't been on TV in like literally a year. Um, so he, they outright talk about it, the fear of him being released. They're worried about him getting cut. Not only the fact that he's going to be fired, but he's on a work visa. He's from Australia. So if he gets fired, he's going to have to go back home to Australia. What does that mean for the future of their relationship? But they can avoid this altogether if they get married. But... She doesn't want to rush to have a wedding in 90 days. There's something called a fiancé visa where they have to get they can get married in 90 days. Um, obviously, if they get married, he wouldn't have to move back if he got fired. So there's a lot of pressure on Alexa Bliss right now to get married as soon as possible. But it's been two years, and they can't really find a time to plan out the wedding. And they've been engaged for that time as well. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, so anyway, Nia Jax meets with Alexa Bliss and Buddy Murphy, asks them how the wedding is going, and Bliss talked about not liking the pressure, unlike Miz and Maurice, who, while Miz was on the road, he did plan the wedding with Maurice, but that's, like, who Miz is, though. The guy's a fucking workhorse, so that is no surprise whatsoever. Alexa Bliss wants to take her time and enjoy the process. You only get married once. I mean, that's not really true, but you can only get married first once, I guess is the better way to put, um, get the better way to put it. So anyway, Nia Jax says that she hears excuse after excuse after excuse. If you want to do it, you got to ask yourself, do you really actually want to get married? 
Um, like, if you really want to get married, this would have been done by now, or you would already be in the process of getting married. Like, is this really something you want to do? And then she walks off. And Alexa Bliss, understandably so, gets mad at that. And she says to Buddy Murphy before she walks off that, hey, if Nia Jax does not want to get to know my love life, then I'm not going to want to get to know hers. She doesn't want to take the time, then fuck it, I won't even worry about her. So Nia Jax and Alexa were supposed to go shopping for this Sex in the City party that's going to be happening coming up on a future episode of the show. Alexa Bliss no-shows. They wait with the producers. Nia Jax says, fuck it, I'm leaving. If she's not going to show up and she won't text me, then whatever. I guess she did text her at some point afterwards saying that she's not going, so they ended up leaving. She went with the Bellas instead. Uh, Nia Jax, that is. They went purse shopping to shop for the Sex and the City party. Um, and the Bellas are like, oh, that's a shame she didn't show up, blah, blah, blah. So Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax meet up later on at some like bar or whatever before they plan out the Sex and the City party. They talk it out. They both apologize. And um, Bliss admits that the reason it kind of pissed her off that Nia said that was because she's heard it a million times, specifically with her mother. So at this point, she feels like she's on the verge of a mental breakdown. If she can hear that again from, if she hears that again from Nia Jax or her mom or whoever. Um, but they do rekindle their friendship and they're on decent terms. So that is it for season seven, episode eight of Total Diva. Single in the City was the title of the show. Um, I'm sure, I think they do replay them before every new episode on Wednesdays on the E! Network, so you can check out this episode coming up on Wednesday night before the new episode goes up at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the E! Network, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I'll be back, obviously, next week with another all-new review of Total Divas right here on WWE Network and Chill, but tomorrow here on the show, also on WWE Network and Chill, you can check out my review of the Cesaro edition of WWE Photoshoot that aired after Raw this past week on the WWE Network. There were two of them. There was a Miz one and a Cesaro one. The Miz one already went up on the YouTube channel like a week or two ago, um, like a while ago, not like in the last few days. So I've already seen it and it was really, really good, but I don't really feel like, I didn't think they would air it on the network, so I don't really feel like rewatching it again just to review it. Um, it is great, though, so definitely check it out. But I will review the Cesaro one. That one I had not seen before it went up on the network, so you can check that out and also listen to my review right here uh, tomorrow, almost like next week. Oh, technically it is the next week on Monday. Um, anyway, on Monday right here on WWE Network and Chill. That being said, guys, you can like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel, moreover, than anything else for more daily content. That being said, folks, have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.